everyone. So we're going to continue with the lecture for chapter four. Uh, we're going to talk about the Spanish-American rebellions that begin in 1810 through 1815. By the late 1700s, Spanish-American Creoles, who are the European descent, fully blooded European descent, born in the Americas. They had grown very resentful towards the Peninsulars, who are the people from Spain, the Spaniards, because they had uh, top privileges over power and wealth above the Creoles, and they wanted that power at the top. Uh, but it's interesting, three quarters of the population were indigenous, African, or mixed descent, uh, mestizos, who are half, um, you know, half European and half indigenous, or mulatos, who are half African and half European. And they had more reasons to revolt against the Creoles, who always kept them in their place. The Patriots will later use nativism to unify against the Peninsulars, Nativism uh, basically glorified an American identity defined by the place where they were born. So everybody was born in America, whether you're a, a Creole, you know, you're African, or in, in you know, in, I guess indigenous or uh, mixed race. So we're going to talk about Mexico's independence here. This movement is very interesting. Uh, there was a priest who was a Creole named Father Miguel Hidalgo, and he read a lot of banned books, um, French books that were banned by the Inquisition and the Catholic Church, and he challenged the Catholic rule of sexual abstinence for the clergy. And the Inquisition had a file on him, and they were coming after him. They, were, they had an order to arrest him, so Hidalgo hurried to his church and rang the bell, and he spoke to his audience, um, encouraging them to defend Mexico against the Peninsulars, who had tyrant authority and were the enemies, you know, of Fernando VII. And he presented the, this um, rivalry of Creoles versus Peninsular as Spanish American versus Spain. So in reality, the Creoles just won the top priority position in the society. And they turned things around to unify everybody to fight against Spain. This battle uh, cry was... Um, Long live the Virgin of Guadalupe and death to the Spaniards. And this appeal really worked. And Father Hidalgo will have many followers even after his death. So this is a picture of Father Hidalgo. It's a painting that shows when he rang the bell and joined forces with everybody to fight against the Spaniards. So all these poor rural people came in the thousands to join the force. And when the Peninsulars saw like 20,000 people marching towards uh, them, they barricaded themselves in a massive granary in Guanajuato, Mexico. And on this day, they say that hundreds of Peninsulars died. So there's a story where this indigenous um, guy who was very strong, sounds like Hercules, he took a huge piece of piece of rock and he carried it to the door and he was able to um, bring the door down with a huge piece of rock. And they were able to attack and many uh, peninsulars died that day. Hidalgo's followers grew to 80,000. But after only a few months, Hidalgo was captured and he was forced to repent and he was executed and they put his head on display. But his movement continued and he will not die with his death. In southern Mexico, one of Hidalgo's followers, uh, officers, was Father Jose Maria Morelos. He was a mestizo and he actually rose a rebellion 
and for him his main goals was to end slavery and end the caste system and they wanted to make the conditions of the indigenous people uh, better they wanted to improve it and he prohibited the caste system and all born in Mexico were simply he would call Americanos so Father Jose Maria Morelos actually was fighting for the rights of the people at the bottom. These movements did not attract the Creoles. So Father Morelos was caught and he was executed in 1815. And many of the small bands of patriot guerrillas continued living off the lands like bandits. So this is Alondiga Granadita in Guanajuato, Mexico where the peninsulars kind of barricaded themselves and that indigenous guy, his name was Pipila, was able to uh, tear down the door with that piece of rock and many of the peninsulars died on that day. So if you go to Guanajuato, Mexico, you can visit that today. And you have a monument to Hidalgo there. And you have Hidalgo and Morelos, as you can see in this picture. This is a painting of Jose Maria Morelos. And the Mexican War of Independence, there's a video that I will show you, maybe I'll post it on Canvas, okay? Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about Peru now. So that's Mexico. So it started with Father Morelos, I mean, Father uh, Hidalgo, getting all the indigenous people together. So we call the uh, Mexican uh, revolt against you know the Spaniards more like from bottom to top because he got together all the indigenous people from the bottom to follow uh, this movement against the peninsulars. In Peru, we're going to talk about a little bit what happened in Peru. Uh, uh, independence got a slower start because Peruvian Creoles, they experienced the indigenous rebellion of Tupac Amaru II in the 1780s. And they saw the danger of mobilizing all these indigenous people against the peninsulars. They were afraid where this was going to go. So Peru, along with Bolivia and Ecuador, remained under Spanish control until the end. You will see Peru is the last place where they're able to defeat the forces, the Spanish forces, and, and liberate it from the um, Spanish control. And so... While this is happening in the 1810s everywhere else, Peru remained under the Spanish control. Caracas in Buenos Aires had cabildos abiertos. Remember, these are patriot juntas with uh, men who are Creoles, right? Who are at the top of the society. And in these two cities, which is in Venezuela and Argentina, this was the revolution from above that led to the bottom. So everything all the ideas all the armies and everything got organized from the top from the creoles who were organizing all these things in cabildos abiertos so mexico is a little bit from bottom to top um and that revolution because most of the movement happened with the indigenous even though father hidalgo was a creole he was not a general he did not organize like armies or anything he just uh, dispersed the idea and the indigenous revolt. So it's a revolution from bottom up. In Caracas in Buenos Aires, the revolution is from top down. It's coming from the Creoles and trickling down to con to organize and uh, mobilize everybody at the bottom. Venezuela already had a revolution and gained independence by early 1811. And Venezuela did not uh, have, have an easy transition transition they first had an earthquake and um, in the tropical plains of Orinoco River basin there was a um, you know dark cowboys dark skin car cowboys called llaneros and they had no sympathy on joining this to fight for the elite of Caracas so they were against all this when the Caracas junta denied the authority of Fernando the seventh the llaneros opted to defend King Fernando VII. So they were against all the Creoles who were organizing the revolutionary movements. So this is in Buenos Aires. It's a cabildo 
um, where they had cabildos abiertos, then you can actually go visit that um, cabildo. It's right by Plaza de Mayo, the main central plaza in Buenos Aires. And now it's a museum, so you can go see different documents, um, you know, paintings and furniture from the time. And this is the way it looked back then in the 1800s. So the building is, you know, the same building from then. Cabildo in Caracas looks like this today. And here you see a painting when they got together back then, all the Creoles, when they were having cabildos abiertos. In Argentina, back in 1806 and 1807, uh, when the Spanish and the British were enemies, the British had an expedition that landed in, uh, in the vice royalty of Rio de la Plata in Buenos Aires, and the local militia was able to defeat them. Um, so they had a military advantage. They had people who were already trained uh, when the Spanish Napoleon, Napoleonic uh, crisis began. Uh, by May 1810, Argentina gained independence. By 1815, with the execution of uh, Father Morelos in Mexico, royalist uh, victories in Venezuela, Colombia and Chile, Peru was still in the Spanish hands. And patriots that had not succeeded in getting people on their side, you know, um, still had the, I guess, the control of Spain. So what did they do? The Patriots' winning strategy was nativism. The Creole's uh, leaders, the Creole leaders, had no interest in making the colonial society more egalitarian, equal society. They just wanted to, to rule themselves. So they're getting everybody under nativism, so everybody fights against the peninsulars, the Spaniards, but their goal is not to make the society equal and make everybody have equal rights. It's just them, the Creoles, taking control over the power at the top and keeping, keeping the same um, society that they had. The strategy of nativism glorified American identity and defined by birthplace, something Creoles, indigenous, and mixed blood, and African slaves, they all shared. They were Americanos. You know, and was that nativist, nativist uh, keyword. Nativism, linked with the liberal ideologies, governed by the people and the Americanos. So that was the idea. The revolutionary leaders wanted popular support to win, but at the end, they didn't want any social equality. So you will see, even after they gain independence from Spain, the society remains with the same, um, you know, uh, social classes and stratification in the society. So that's it for now. And next time I'll tell you the last part of this chapter. Okay, bye.